Short Welcome one. to the Vintners January 2011 tasting here at my co- You know, I didn't even introduce you like as if they don't know, but... Well, they should know who I am by now. My oh, name is in Lutz somewhere. Really? Yeah, Seriously, my mom. My co-host. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Um, so you were commenting, we changed our, our product ID codes and it really confused you. Yes, it did. Because, you know, one stands for first and W stands for white. Okay. Okay. Except that you had a W1 and a W2, oh, and, and for the Vintner series, or the limited series, and, some, and sometimes it was W R1 and R2, and they were both um, for the... I just uh, decided that my father's nomenclature, which has completely fallen apart from 1972, doesn't apply anymore. That's the problem. You know the main reason is? No. My dad never had an alternate selection for the reds and the whites in the classic series, and now we do. So you get two different reds and two different whites. You guys really care about that, don't you? Yes. This about is as really much good. as I do. Can so, we get on to the wine? Let's go to this first, first press. press. Yeah, first we were press talking about the cab earlier, which was such a great wine. First press cab was out of this world. Really and, good wine. And I felt the same way about the Chardonnay. I tasted them together. As much as I don't like to show t- the same label, the same brand, more than the once or twice a year or once a year, uh, this I had to do it. This the is, is great. Napa Valley Chardonnay. And um, do we know what the prices are? Mm. We really don't, don't we? Yeah. Well, we know it's fourteen ninety nine. Yeah, that was a, that was the first bottle. And the reorders are probably twelve ninety nine. Probably, Not probably is good. <laughs> but you know, I like this because it wasn't over oaked. No, there's it wasn't. definitely oak in there. And for those of you who like that that fairly rich kind of almost Rombauer style, mm-hmm. uh, for a lot less money, this is your wine. Yeah, um, I'm doing I'm doing a ninety one on that. I go ninety one on that. <laughs> You heard it Just here good first. good quality Chardonnay from Napa Valley. Um, not overdone and a lot less money. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which is uh, getting uh, harder to do even in today's world. It's amazing. You know. Wow. Okay. Yeah, you, can, you, you have to curb your enthusiasm for Chardonnay, Ed. I, you know, I'm working on it, Paul. You know? <laughs> Jeez. Right. I don't know if you guys noticed, you know, if you watch the limited series thing, we had tasted that as the Viognier from Australia. He's like, ah, it's not blah, blah, blah. And Chardonnay's like, mm-hmm. no. Yeah, you could have gone the whole podcast without saying that. Well, I had to because I want them to know. You want them to know. I want okay. them to know. This is the MSH, MSH Sellers Merlot, Merlot 2009, Rutherford. Put it in the center, please. Napa so they can see it. Yeah, something you look at. Yeah. yeah, this is really good. This is actually really, really wow, good. Wow, the nose. Yeah, I mean, this is really, really nice. I mean, it's so Napa Valley. You got that earthy, licorice, leathery sort of, um, you know, um, mm-hmm. just rich and great fruit. It's still young. I know, nice. This is so much development to have, and it's, it's got all the complexity it needs wow. to develop in a really fun Ooh. wine. Man, that is really good. Now, Case in point, um, you know, we had a really good Merlot yesterday at this mm. dinner, and um, I mean, it was uh, Behringer Bancroft Ranch, which is one of the best Merlots in California, without question, and it's about sixty bucks. It'd be interesting, uh, is it really oh, easy? Probably more than that now. But you know, this wine—if you had them side by side, you wouldn't go, "Oh, this is sixty dollars, and this one's twelve ninety-nine." Yeah, no right. way. There's absolutely no way. If this is sixty dollars, this is forty. You know, fourteen ninety-nine. I'm giving it a ninety-two. Probably get more for twelve or thirteen ninety nine. I haven't priced it yet. Unbelievable! But that's great this bottle wine. Rutherford, Rutherford. You know, one of the best areas in the Napa Valley, which is one of the best areas for growing, especially this grape. So, I think you scored on this one, PK. Oh boy! Yeah, absolutely. You know, the 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 dad was pouring at my Christmas party. We had ninety people for Christmas. Ninety people. 90. No wonder your wife said it was a joke. It was crazy. <laughs> it was a crazy. And, uh, we went through all that wine, but my dad had a blast behind the bar. Just had a blast. I'll bet. He just was in his element. He was talking about the wines, and we had the um, we had the Chardonnay uh, from we had the spa- we had the Placeré sparkling wine, the Champagne. Mm. And then we were pouring that Shiraz, that sparkly Shiraz. Oh, that was delicious. Oh, yeah. That's unbelievable. Now, just in case you haven't had an MSH in your cellar, we got the we Chardonnay got as well. That's right. Mm-hmm. Second chance. Wow. This is so different from the first press because right. I don't think it's got any oak on it at all. It's, it's just real clean like and crisp, you know. And then you move the notes over here. Mm. There it is. Wow, that's delicious. How can you spell Chardonnay different on this one than these on the other one? Because I want to see if anybody's paying attention, mm. and obviously nobody is. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Delicious wine. 
almost doesn't taste like Chardonnay, you know? It's got a, a different finish to yeah, it. Yeah, it's got the much, much different. Well, because of the dough oak. You know, one of the things people are, oh, like oaky Chardonnays. Well, then go get a toothpick and put it in your glass for crying out loud. Because the fact is, this is the pure expression of Chardonnay, not when it's just hammered with wood. Now, the first press isn't that hammered, so you get that you get some some nuance here. But you have fruit flavors, but this is mostly fruit. This is mostly like green apple, mm -hmm. you know, which is exactly what what, uh, what Chardonnay is. You know, it's just it's really really pretty. I'm starting to get more in tune with Chardonnays that are bringing the fruit out. We're getting rid of the oak bombs and, and finding that it's actually a pretty finessed grape if it's done right. Good point. You know? Absolutely a great point. It is. It's not a big, it's not as big as we think of it as being because it's what's done to it that makes it big. That's right. They can have a lot of wonderful flavors. And you heard that here first, boys and girls. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. As long as you're 21, boys and girls. <laughs> All right. Cabernet this, Sauvignon from Tamero. Yeah, this is that Argentinian one. You know, they're just coming up with some really high-end wines that are, they really are worthy of the uh, accolades they're getting. We've been tasting this for years, actually. And this wine, um, wow. uh, this wine, you know, is grown in Argentina in the Mendoza region, which is, as I said before, is very hilly, and, and the conditions mm. that make those hills are perfect for growing grapes. Is that Argentina written all over it? Mm-hmm. It's a little lean right now. I mean, it's a little. It's, it needs to open mm. up a little bit, but it's got some licorice and it's got. Some oh licorice. God, tons of licorice! Yeah, isn't that great? Well, you know, people people ask me all the time. Well, how do you get all those those words you use mm -hmm. to describe the wines? I mean, do they put licorice in it? Do they put black cherry? Well, no, they don't. But that's one of the things that makes wine from grapes so fascinating is it can pick up so many different flavors and it's just grapes. There's nothing else in there. They don't put cherry juice or pineapple juice right. or apple juice in the wines. I mean, yeah, some of them do, but that's, you know, lunatic fringe. But the fact is, if it's labeled Chardonnay, it's Chardonnay. It's not something else. And it can't be, you know, it could be other grapes, but only 25% of other grapes. And it can't be other juice. You can't put juice in it. So that's what makes these wines so amazing is they do pick up these flavors. And it's obvious. It's not just, you know, oh, a hint of this or whatever. No, no, that's this one clearly. And it, it sort of starts out kind of slow. Also, yeah. boom, it hits right before yeah, the finish. It's, it's, all kinds of things pretty, going on there. Pretty big wine. And, it's the uh, uh, first one. It's twenty nine nine on the shelf. It's the first one's fourteen ninety nine, and you can get more for thirteen ninety nine. And... That is a steal. That's really a great this price. Is a this is a wine. this is a limited series wine if there ever was I'll one. Put you this know. Back in the glass there, a little more in there. See uh, well, and there we have it. The Vintner series for twenty eleven. Cheers. Yeah. Did I say my co-host Ed Masiano? No. Okay, sorry. I love hearing that. <laughs> <though>. <laughs>